Hi, my name is Lucy Phillips. I'm a voice and performance coach. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about stage fright and performing nerves. I've worked with an awful lot of people who have been absolutely terrified about getting up and performing or singing or dancing or acting in front of uh, an audience. Um, sometimes they're actually a, a professional performer who's been performing for many, many years, but maybe something's happened that has triggered a nervous reaction and from then on they're just paralyzed with stage fright. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that today and to give you some guidance and to give you some things that will really help if you're experiencing stage fright or nervousness from performing. So I'm going to break down this advice into seven points. So number one, the first thing is symptoms of stage fright. What happens to you when you get nervous? When you get on stage in front of people, your nervous system will kick in and you will get symptoms of your nerves. Now, they may be um, shortness of breath or trouble breathing or um, wobbly legs, fe feeling shaky, uh, sweating a lot, um, or maybe your mouth gets dry, something like that. The first thing I would suggest is get to know the symptoms of your nerves so that they don't take you by surprise, so that you can be prepared for them. I went through a time of getting quite nervous when I was performing. Um, I was doing some really important gigs and um, for some reason some stage fright kicked in. But when I realized what it was that, that, um, that happened to me when I started performing, I was able to deal with that. I knew that I would get really wobbly legs, I would feel really shaky. So I made sure that the footwear, the clothes that I chose to wear for the performances really helped there. In fact, for a while I even performed bare feet because it really gave me a grounding and it really helped with that. Um, if you get short of breath, then make sure that before your performance you're controlling your breath, do some breathing exercises. And when you're performing, focus on the breath so that you don't get taken by surprise. If you uh, get really sweaty, have something on hand to deal with that. Maybe a towel at the side of the stage, maybe a tissue in your pocket, something like that. Uh, dry mouth, this happens a lot to people when they're talking or when they've got to sing, they get a really dry mouth. So have a bottle of water, keep hydrated well before your performance. And a little tip as well is if you actually just very gently, don't hurt yourself, but very gently chew or bite on the side of your tongue, it will create more saliva in your mouth. So that can help as well. So point number one is know your symptoms of nerves and be prepared for them. Don't let them take you by surprise. Point number two, and this to me is so, so important, is practice what you're going to perform. Don't think that just running through a song a couple of times is going to be enough for you to get on stage and do it in front of an audience. Confidence follows competence. If you feel that you are well enough prepared, you will feel more confident in doing that in front of an audience. Just running it through a couple of times won't do because instinctively you will know that you're not well enough prepared. The amount of people that have said to me, yeah, yeah, I'm ready, I've listened to it, you know, on the train quite a few times, about 10 times, something like that, I'm ready to sing it. No, you're not. You have to practice. So there's a little saying that I always say to people, amateurs practice until they get it right, professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. Have a professional attitude when it comes to performing and make sure that you practice so much that when it comes to being on stage, it feels like second nature to you. Number three, get out of your own head. Very often when someone's performing, there is an internal dialogue going on, which is very often something like, um, am I good enough? Uh, do they like me? Uh, are they judging me? Uh, what if they don't like what I'm doing? Uh, especially when you're in an audition situation, because very often you are thinking, when I get the part, do they think that I'm good enough? Well, here's something that I hope doesn't sound too cruel, but you will never be the best singer in the world. You'll never be the best performer 
or the best actor or the best dancer. Here's the reason why. Because all of these things are subjective. What one person thinks is the most amazing singer, the best singer in the world, when they sing their, their notes are clear and pure and their voice is strong and, and, and their voice touches them and it just makes them feel amazing, somebody else just thinks they're screeching, gets nothing from it. So it's completely subjective. So don't try to be the best. In fact, make your communication the most important thing. Don't focus on, on you and how well you're doing. Just focus on getting your performance, your communication, what you want to say to the audience, what, you're, what you want your audience to feel. Make that the most important thing. Give your performance to your audience rather than making it about you. And when you do that, you'll feel less like you're on show, like you're being judged. And all those negative little thoughts that creep in that make you feel so bad and feel so nervous will just go because you're actually giving rather than focusing on you. Number four, practice feeling confident. Now, I said earlier that you need to practice what you're going to perform, so practice your song, your dance, your speech, but also practice feeling confident. And one of the ways that you can do that is just get somewhere really quiet, uh, sit in a chair, or on the floor, or whatever, but somewhere where you just feel really comfortable. And you can even put on the song, on some headphones or something like that, of either you performing, maybe you've recorded it, or even the original artist, or somebody singing it. Put it on, and whilst you're hearing the song, I want you to imagine that you're on stage. If you know where you're going to perform, that's even better, because you can visualize the surroundings. And I want you to imagine that you're on stage, and you're not worried about the singing or anything like that at this stage, because you're just seeing yourself performing. On stage, doing a performance, and whilst you're doing that, whilst you're visualizing yourself on stage doing the performance, I want you to feel confident. It might take a little bit of time to do this, and one tip that I would give you is think of a time when you've done something where you have felt confident. It might not even be performing. It might have been talking to someone and getting your point across or doing something completely different, but you were confident with a piece of work you did. There will be a time in your life at some stage that you have felt confident, even if it was just for one minute. And you still know what that feels like. It's still within you to know what that confidence feels like. So sit somewhere quiet, get the music playing, and see yourself performing that song, that dance, whatever it is that you're performing, and feel confident. Do this as often as you can, and enjoy it as well. Because what will happen is when it comes to you actually physically really doing the performance, your brain will kind of go, hang on, we've been here before, and actually I remember this, yeah, we were quite confident when we did it. And your confidence from that visualization will be carried forth into your reality. Okay, number five. I'm sorry about this, I'm just going to completely blow an old myth out of the water. Uh, Dutch courage. Yeah, having a drink before you get on stage to make you feel more confident. Sorry, it doesn't work. It, will, it kind of make, might make you feel a little bit more confident, but actually what it's doing is it's actually lowering your standards. So you feel that you're reaching the standard that you think you wanted, but actually it's a lower standard. Also, it does have some physical effects on you as well. It's certainly going to dry out your mouth a little bit more. So if your nerves bring on a dry mouth, you've got to be really, really careful with that. So watch out for the old Dutch courage thing. Now also, I do know that a lot of people really struggle with feeling over-emotional when they sing or do a performance. Sometimes that can be a real problem, especially if maybe you've had something um, happen in your life which has brought on the stage fright, um, you know, death of a loved one or maybe a, a, a car accident or something like that. All these things can actually really bring on an emotional response which gives you stage fright. 
Um, and so as you are performing, as you start singing, maybe if you're singing a song which, is, uh, which touches on those emotions, you may feel like uh, you're unable to sing because the emotions take over. So here's a little bit of a tip for you. Very often when we perform, we are staring straight ahead and we focus on a point in front of us. That unfortunately is one of the worst things you could do when it comes to getting over emotional. Um, when you're in peripheral vision, you are slightly detached from the emotional part of your brain. So if you put your hands up to the side of your face and wiggle your fingers, yeah, so you're looking ahead, but you can still see your fingers wiggling at the side, you're now in peripheral vision. And you'll find that you'll actually feel less emotional in that state. So if you're looking straight ahead, and you're really focusing straight ahead, then you're going, there's more likelihood that you're going to feel more emotion and it could um, overtake your performance. So practice getting into the state of peripheral vision where you're aware of your surroundings, the outside of you. And that's really going to help you if you get over emotional when you perform. Okay, number six. Get into a routine before you perform. So if you do uh, regular gigs or something, make sure that your vocal warm-up is part of your routine. Um, give yourself time to eat. Give yourself time to relax before you get on stage. Uh, set yourself a, a routine that makes you feel relaxed and comfortable before you go on. There's nothing worse than having to rush on to a performance because actually that's going to make you feel unprepared, it's going to make you feel um, a little bit stressed and tense. So if you can get yourself into a very relaxed state before you get on stage, you're going to have a much better performance. So find a routine that gets you relaxed. Finally, number seven. It's actually good to be nervous when you perform. In fact, if you're ever at the side of the stage and you're not feeling nervous and you can just work, walk on, it's probably a good time to quit. Feel that adrenaline is going to enhance your performance. But I want you to think of this. The feeling of, of adrenaline inside your body can either be nerves and fear or excitement. And the only thing really that differs is your anticipated outcome. So maybe try this. The next time that you're at the side of the stage and you're feeling really, really nervous, accept those nerves. Go, okay, this is all right. But what kind of outcome am I expecting? Am I expecting to go really bad and terrible and something might go wrong? I'm feeling nervous because something might go wrong. Or can you turn it around? Can you feel those nerves and go, you know what? I'm feeling this because I'm excited, because I'm confident that I've prepared enough. I'm confident that I know the material really well and that I have the ability to do this and it's going to go absolutely fine and the audience are going to enjoy it because I'm going to communicate to them really well and they're going to feel what I want them to feel and it's all going to be great. So try to reverse the feeling of your nerves, of that adrenaline. Don't always associate that feeling of nervousness as a bad thing, try to turn it around and allow yourself to feel that adrenaline. It's a good thing. It will give you a better performance in the end. So anyway, I hope that some of these things have been really, really useful to you. If you're still feeling that you're struggling with your nerves and you want some more work, then I'd be happy to work with you. There are many more um, uh, exercises that we can do um, to help you get through your nerves, um, as well as performance training, audition coaching. I can help you with these things. So please do get in touch. Um, my contact details are on the bottom here. I'd love to see you. Thanks a lot for watching.